It's croissant time, made by the master, Daria. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the croissants you have been dreaming for. And you can now make it like a baker. Hi and welcome to Vincenzo's Plate with Daria's Plate, the head pastry chef of Styx here in Sydney. She is an amazing pastry chef. She can make fantastic bread, lots of sweets, but most importantly, the croissants. 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 Mm. Croissants. Very nice accent. <laughs> and they are beautiful. We want to see, we want to learn from you how to make them perfectly, how we can see the beautiful What's it called the inside part? Crumb. Yeah, the crumb, yeah. We want to see how crusty they are on the outside. How flaky. They're perfectly good, flaky. And I want to learn every single secret from you, please. Are you ready to share the secrets with us? You are more than welcome. I would love to. <laughs> Come on, let's do it. Now we're making our croissant dough. We're using one liter of whole milk, 1.3 kilo of whole grain flour. So this is a strong bread flour. 700 grams of plain flour, 300 grams of caster sugar, 300 grams of unsalted butter, cold, uh, 50 grams of dry yeast, and 50 grams of salt. So first goes milk. It's easier to put milk in first because that uh, will be uh, make make the process the mixing process a bit easier. Then the flour. So I need to stress that all ingredients need to be cold. And I also usually pre-chill my bowl and the, and, the, and the dough hook so that we don't overheat the, the dough during the mixing process. So salt and um, yeast need to go in different spots so we don't stress the yeast because uh, salt uh, weakens the yeast. So that's why we always put them in a different uh, spots in the bowl so they don't come in direct contact straight away before mixing. So now we put our bowl onto the mixing machine. We're using a hook, a classic dough hook. And it's also very cold oh, yeah. because it was in the fridge. Because this is the first uh, part of the mixer that heats up the most and heats the dough. We don't want the dough to get too warm. Ideally, it shouldn't go uh, above 23 degrees Celsius in temperature, otherwise uh, yeast will start to activate too fast and we don't want that. It will compromise the, uh, the recipe and the dough. So now we put our bowl onto the mixing machine. We always start with a slow speed to make sure that our ingredients are well incorporated before we switch to a higher speed. And uh, the whole process will take about 15 minutes. So during the mixing process, we need to develop some uh, gluten strength. But at the same time, it doesn't have to be uh, very, very well developed, like if we were making uh, brioche, for example. If our dough is too strong, gluten is developed to its maximum, it will be very hard to laminate and after that shape our croissant, they will be too resistant uh, to stretching and it will be too hard for us to shape them uh, nicely. So now our dough is mixed, it's, uh, it feels nice, soft and cold enough. You can check the temperature of your dough if you're not sure, but I can feel by my hand that it's still nice and cold, not, not too warm. I repeat, we don't want our dough to be too warm. Mix the dough to give it a final touch. Does it really matter how you mix it? Are you kneaded the dough? Well, it doesn't, doesn't really matter, but we want the dough to be a nice, uh, not rough bowl to help uh, develop the gluten. So now we need to cover our uh, dough. This is important because we don't want to, uh, dough to, to dry out. Just cover it with a nice elastic and leave it to rest. So this is called uh, bench uh, rest. This is when we let the gluten to uh, relax a little bit, so it will be easier for us to shape it uh, into the final shape. If we don't rest the dough, the, uh, it will be uh, breaking and uh, tearing, and we don't want that, that to happen. Yet. 
So this is our croissant dough after uh, 30 to 40 minutes resting. It depends on the temperature of your croissant dough, the temperature of your room. So, but it needs to feel a bit puffed, not too much. It doesn't have to be uh, too gassy. Otherwise, uh, that's not uh, the stage of the fermentation that we want it to become gassy. I appreciate it usually give it a bit of a nice rectangle shape on the batch. You see how uh, soft and uh, smooth it is. Um, I use a normal 60 by 40 trays. I also cover it with a plastic uh, clean wrap so to prevent the dough from sticking to the tray. Trust me you won't, don't want your dough to stick to it. It's very tricky to remove it. Uh, shape this dough at this stage really nice um, uh, rectangle shape so it makes it easier with the following uh, process of lamination. To get those corners a little bit more defined you need to go diagonally from the center of your dough to the corners. How you push your dough into the corners as you can see here. So because our dough is so nice and pliable it's, um, we gave it enough rest it doesn't tear, doesn't stretch back too much, which is called the contraction. So it listens to us. So now we we have stretched our dough, nice rectangle shape. The the more perfect you get it, the better. So we cover it with a clean wrap, nice without air bubbles, because if you leave air bubbles, condensation might form on the air bubbles, so you mm. get some ice on your dough. You don't want that. No, you don't. Before uh, uh, placing the dough into the fridge for a uh, long night uh, cold fermentation, I usually freeze it. So to give it a little bit of um, uh, relaxing, if the dough got a little bit too warm, and I don't want to, uh, yeast to start working uh, too early. So I freeze the dough for an hour or two, and then move it into the fridge for the um, uh, long fermentation. So this is day two of croissant production. Uh, this day we need to prepare our butter before lamination. In the industry we only use uh, professional butter for the croissant and uh, for Danish pastry, which already comes in, uh, um, in the form of uh, sheets. So this is not exactly what it is, I already sheeted it a little bit more. But you, you can use a regular butter that you buy in a supermarket, for example, but it will be a little bit more tricky because professional butter is, has already been uh, formulated to retain its nice um, plasticity. So this is very important during the elimination process because if your butter is too cold, it will break during the elimination and you won't get the, your uh, beautiful layers in the croissant. So this is the stage when we need to pre-shape our butter block. It has to be quite thin, so it, it will be, make uh, the elimination process easier. So that's why we use the shita. We pass the dough through the shita a few times just to get the, the, the size and the, and the thickness that we are looking for. So this is our uh, croissant dough that had uh, at least 12 hours rest in the, uh, in the fridge. So it's, you can see it's nice and uh, pliable, elastic, soft, but not too soft. Also it, will, it helps to put the croissant dough uh, in the freezer for about half an hour before sheeting to make sure that it's really cold, it should be around zero or one degree Celsius. So the butter block needs to take about half of the size of the, um, uh, of the dough. So you can see that my block is a little bit uh, shorter. So I need to, I will pass it through to the machine a couple of times to get to make sure that they, these are two equal halves. So now it looks good. Right, to me, if it's a little bit longer, it's not a problem. We can always uh, fold the sides. So it's still very cold. And um, what we're also looking for is not exactly the temperature, but the most important is the texture. So both your butter and the, and the dough need to be the same consistency. This is the key to uh, proper lamination. If your butter is too, too hard or too soft, or the other way around, your dough is too hard or soft, your layers won't be perfect. So uh, this method that I particularly use uh, in um, uh, lamination, the croissant dough, some people call it sandwich. So in the classic, uh, classic way, will you just uh, fold the croissant dough and shape it into a block. What I do, I um, cut off the half of the block 
and put it on top of my first block. And then I put the, fix them together. So uh, using this method, we will get uh, two layers of uh, uh, dough with the bar in between, which is open from uh, all sides, but maybe uh, apart from this one. So now we start uh, lamination itself. You need to try to go, this is very important stage. If you do it on the machine, so your steps need to be quite dramatic. So this stage needs to be pretty quick. Uh, I shade my uh, block to about 10, uh, 10 millimeters in thickness. So we are folding it into, we're doing a uh, single turn, which is also called as a threefold. So I measure roughly same three, same um, sections. And again, I'm following the sandwich uh, technique. So I want to get layers of the, of the dough. So I cut it and I put it on. So now we have a triple decker. It was a double decker before. Now it's a triple decker. So you can see you have three layers of butter in your block at the moment. So now what we do, we need to do a second uh, single turn. Uh, yeah, you can rest in between, but it, uh, it takes much, um, it takes take faster to do it back, back to back, as we call it. So we're doing second uh, single turn. I will explain about the uh, turns a little bit later and why I do it this way. Different chefs use different methods with, uh, with the turns. So we trim the, our block to, make, to get perfect layers. Uh, with the trimmings, if you have to do it, it's not a, a problem. You can always, we here in the kitchen, we use them for the next door to add a bit more uh, flavor as a pre-ferment, as we call it. And another sandwich. Now you've got nine layers. Yes. Now we get nine layers of butter, and at the end it will will get uh, 37 layers in total. So make sure it's nice and uh, aligned, nice, clean block. The cleaner you work, the more precise your actions are, the better your final product will be. Now we have our block after with the first uh, two turns. We need to rest it, recover it, and put it uh, in the fridge for about um, 20 to 25 minutes. So make sure it to, to we maintain the, the temperature, it stays really nice and cold. And also the dough relaxes a little bit, the gluten relaxes, and makes it easier for us to uh, do the last turn. Like so now after a half an hour rest, and the first two turns, we need to do the final uh, third turn. And that will give us uh, 37 layers in total. Now remember, when you do the turns, you have to actually turn it 90 degrees and we go in this direction. This is very important. If you forget to, to, to turn your block, at the end of the day, when you will shape in croissant, you will be all very funny shapes. You won't get a nice shape croissant because the dough will, will contract in the opposite direction. You always have to turn your block in between your turns. So again, we are going to 10 uh, millimeters in thickness. So this is our block. Again, sandwich, remember? can see the layers so these ones this is the end part so because it was uh, but these are the, the central uh, layers wow 37 layers yeah so this wow. is our final turn now we wrap it nicely at this stage you can freeze your block for up to I would say a week you can do that and or you can put it in the fridge for a half an hour and then into freezer for another half an hour. 
So this is our block for after um, uh, resting in the uh, freezer and fridge. So again, you need to um, work around the temperature in your kitchen and see how it goes. If it's a bit uh, warmer, then you need to uh, keep it for a bit longer in the freezer. But also be careful, uh, what depends on what butter you use. If you use professional butter like I'm doing, it's safer to keep croissant block in the freezer for longer. But if you're using a regular unsalted butter from supermarket, that butter doesn't like uh, freezing. It has a higher uh, water content than the professional butter. And after 15 minutes uh, or longer in the freezer, the butter will freeze. And when you start um, laminating or sheeting your um, croissant block, the butter will break inside. The final thickness of the um, croissant dough will be between four and five millimeters. I am evening out in during the sheeting process so to make it as even as possible. Yeah, all good. We are good. So now it's uh, we sheeted it to the thickness that we want. Yeah, so just uh, roll it onto the rolling pin. Look at that. The layers. Oh wow. This is the uh, uh, cutter. It is a very handy uh, tool in the, in the kitchen because you can cut any size, uh, like few few portions at a time. It's also used for pasta. I see people using it for... Yeah, yeah. I actually use a um, uh, pasta cutter to cut my Danish sheets and these ones too, which because it's very uh, nice and handy, you don't need to lift the knife all the time. So, in this case, I, I make my croissant uh, about 9 cm width. So if you feel comfortable, cut, cut them by hand without measuring, you can do so, or you can measure them. The only thing is that uh, when you measure cross, your croissant with, the, with this, this cutter, you need to uh, beware that every time you cut it with a knife, you will be losing 2 to 3 millimeters just because of the thickness of the knife blade. For example, if I cut them, measure them this way, right so this will be nine i cut it so this is the the size that i want i cut this one this will be also the right one but this will be less than nine already and i can prove it i put it here and you see where the nine is now the, this mark is the original mark when i did it uh, first time this is the actual size that happened and keep going, you will lose. So by the end, you will have croissant that will weigh 20% less at least, will be smaller. It's we'll because every with time. Every, every cut, you will be losing it. So you either go by, by eye, if you trust your eye, if you have really good eye, and you can go, or you, can, or you need to measure them every time. But... You have a good eye. <laughs> I'm training it. Should be, uh, we are making about between 90 to 95 grams per croissant. So after you cut your croissant, it's better to let, give them a bit of a rest, especially if your kitchen is a bit warmer. So what I usually do, I cut all my blocks, because I usually make more than one. So I cut all of them and put them in the fridge. A baking paper at the bottom. Baking paper or uh, clean wrap or anything, so they just don't stick. So. I think and uh, I'm giving them some about 15 minutes rest in the fridge and then we can shape them. So these are croissants that are rested in the fridge. You see they're a little bit sticky because humidity in my kitchen, like I said earlier, is very high. And But I don't want to add any flour because uh, if I add flour then the layer, when I roll them, the layers won't uh, connect, won't stick to each other and the croissant might unroll. So when you roll them, you want this uh, tail, as I call it, to be exactly under the middle of the croissant and you need to push it down a little bit to secure. If, it, if you roll it, for example, if you leave it a little bit out, you roll it. If you leave it this way, the croissant will have this massive tail after it bakes. If you roll it in too much and your tail is on the other side, the croissant will open in the, in the um, oven. 
so it won't be it won't hold the shape it will be like opening sticking out the tail so it's very important to have this tail in right in the middle and press it down to secure so this is the Prova it's actually a very good machine because it's also uh, a retarder so it's set to 28 degrees and 80% uh, humidity 85 so again uh, it's not a, a very precise um, uh, settings so it could be 28 or, 20 or 30 depends on the ambient temperature in the room so now we place our cross sun in the Prua so proving should take you about two two and a half hours so if your cross sun hasn't proved in two two and a half hours it means that something went wrong maybe you forgot the east who knows uh, but minimum two, two hours if it proves too fast if, it, if it's about one and a half hour up, up to two hours then probably your temperature is too high in, uh, in the Prova and it's not great either so it should be nice and slow so now we, are, uh, we need to egg wash our croissant to give it a nice uh, shiny crust uh, flaky uh, surface so uh, I use a really fine um, painter's brush because if you use a normal pastry brush it will be too rough this brush is very soft and it won't damage the very very tense and thin um, layers of the croissant so when we egg wash croissant we need to only egg wash the top horizontal layers we don't want to uh, cover the sides so these sides of the uh, croissant because if it do so uh, egg wash will basically glue those nice layers and won't um, it will prevent croissant from expanding to its maximum so now we are cooking our croissant uh, in a, a conventional oven so we can also bake it in a, a classical deck uh, uh, baker's oven but we find that the best result gives us a uh, conventional oven. So we bake it at 170 degrees, start baking at 170 degrees, 100% humidity, which means that no, no uh, moisture leaves the oven while the baking process. So we put them in. So it's first 10 minutes at 170, and then after 10 minutes, we'll drop the temperature to 160 degrees for another 10 to 11 minutes. After 10 minutes, return temperature down to 160 degrees and uh, give it another 10 to 11 minutes. Are you ready to take it out? <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look at this baby. See. Yes. Yes. Hello, baby. This is what we have. Now, how proud are you of these babies? Ah, very proud at this point. They look very nice. I'm very happy. Okay. I won't touch them at this point because they're very fragile. They need to settle down a little bit, cool down, so the butter sets. And then we can move them and taste. That's the best part. <laughs> now you can either eat them right now, which is my favorite way to eat a croissant, straight from the oven, nice and hot. Yes, it's still a little bit soft and uh, unset, uh, unsettled in the in the middle, but that's what I like best about croissants. It's buttery, it's creamy, it's hot, it's flaky and crunchy on the top. Oh my god, I want to eat it now. <laughs> uh, there's no way you eat this by yourself. <laughs> no. I'm here to <laughs> <Have> eat. To share. <laughs> Please show Go me close how it's inside. Okay, yeah, so you can see at the end of it, just crunch. take it and just oh. pull, it, pull it away. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, like that, look at that. Mmm. Looks smell the butter. Mmm. Mmm. I'm gonna eat my fingers. You see how nice and the, the thin, the, the flake, mm. flakiness on top? No, I get it. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, I've played it. I didn't understand before when you said creamy croissant. Yeah, this is what creamy Super means. Super creamy. Yeah. From now on, I only want my croissant to be warm. Yeah, but not in the microwave. Never. Not in the microwave, no. <laughs> Sorry. Fresh oven, warm. oven. You can. I think I'm in zero seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, but if you get a, even if you buy croissant in a bakery and they bring it home, you can put it in the oven, a really hot oven, mm. about 800, 180, 200 degrees, just for one minute, and your croissant will be almost like a freshly baked oh, one. Wow. Yeah. That's a good tip. To know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.
Welcome. You love the croissant. <laughs> I do. Tell me more about this moment. This is the moment we've been waiting for, you know, the opening. Yes. And you see the beautiful crumbs. It's the moment of truth, actually. Yeah. This is how, when you see that, if actually your, all your work that and time that you put into it, made it work, make it worth it, or you have to work a little bit more. Yeah. So let's see. Let's see, open it for us. Oh yeah, what do you say? Can't be any better. The no. crumb is perfect, the opening is nice, it's cooked perfectly, it's proof, proof, proof perfectly. I'm happy. Well, now we just need to eat it now. <laughs> yes, another one. <laughs> Guys, please, you need to write a big comment for Daria. Say thank you for sharing your secrets. You can open a bakery tomorrow. You can, you can, <laughs> thanks to her. You can just make croissants. Make sure you call the croissants Daria croissants. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> you can charge more for it. <laughs> no, thank you for sharing. Um, this is the best part of the video now because we it get is, to eat yeah, it. Yeah. So, Shall we toast? Mm, can we eat all of them? Yeah. Oh yeah, let's yeah. toast. Yeah, yeah. We say prosper. Cheers. <laughs> <That's better idea. laughs> so thank you so much. We will see you in the next Vincenzo's Play video recipe. E ora si mangia. Grazie mille. Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys and please subscribe. Ah. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Oh my god, mm. it's so good. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Everything is a good sign. It was a good sign to meet you. Mm. Why is it awesome? For somebody's. <laughs> I love that. A new hashtag. Croissant buddies. <laughs>